I welcome everybody to this Bible study where we'll study Revelation chapter 5. Let's pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you for your mercies, your goodness, your grace, the grace to see 2023. We thank you for your love, your salvation, for everything you've done. Be thou glorified the end of days. As we study your word today, we ask that you would come and study with us. We ask that you would reveal yourself to us. Show us deeper secrets from your word, O oh God, and receive the glory, O oh God, in our lives. I pray for my brothers and sisters that are, have joined us, Lord. I ask that you bless them spiritually and in every area of their lives, O oh God. Draw them closer to yourself, O oh God. Draw them closer to your bosom, O oh God, this year in the name of Jesus. And receive the glory concerning their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. So, I want to say Happy New Year to everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year 2023. I hope you enjoyed your holidays. I hope you had rest. And I'm very glad to be here again it takes the strength of god to be here and i'm grateful for strength that god has given me to be here again and i pray that this bible study would bless you i pray that god will reveal himself to you in jesus name amen so let's go ahead into the book of revelation chapter 5 not wasting any more time let's read Open your Bibles to Revelations 5, and we're going to read the whole chapter, and God will help us understand what it means. So Revelations 5, verse 1 to 14, verses 1 to 14. <clears throat> and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals so if you have not been studying revelations with us you would wonder what happened in revelations chapter one to four and i encourage you to go and read so read it and also listen to the past bible studies <clears throat> let me do a brief recap of revelations chapter four now john is being given revelations about the end time god gave jesus sets of revelations to give john and we are trying to understand these sets of revelation right so um in revelations 4 john saw heaven saw god and he described what he saw a throne having lights different kind of beautiful lights coming out of it like precious stones and it was glorious right there were 24 elders around the throne the the four beasts the four creatures that we don't know um what they look like but from john's description one looked like an eagle one looked like a cow one looked like a lion and one looked like a man right so four beasts uh, uh, the one that looked like an eagle looked like an eagle in flight so flying right so these four beasts are always at the turn of God so other items or other things around the turn of God right now because that's how the turn of God looks like consists of the green rainbow so a rainbow that is emerald <laughs> We don't know how that looks because the rainbows that we've seen they have seven colors and this rainbow has is just green maybe shades of green it's around the throne of god also a sea of glass is in front of the throne of god and the seven candlesticks which stands for the seven spirits of god sent out to all the earth is also in front of the throne of god so those are the things in front of the throne of god if you're wondering how does heaven look like how does the throne of god look like um this revelations 4 tells us what 
it looks like and what is happening in heaven. And so it also tells us that this there's singing in heaven, right? So the whenever the four beasts say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, the twenty-four elders would fall down before God's throne and say, Worthy are you, O Lord, to receive all glory, honor, and power, for you created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So God is worthy because he is a creator, and that is where we stopped last week. So um, I'm glad I was able to do a quick recap. And now <laughs> we are going into the deeper parts of Revelation. But we won't be going into the deep, 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 deep secrets today. But this chapter is the chapter that needs to, we need to go through this chapter before Revelation 6. That we will deal with the beginning of the end time. And I'm excited to dig into that. But right now, let's go through this Revelation chapter 5. Because it actually prepares our minds for, it prepares our minds for, Revelation 6 and beyond, it prepares the minds of the listeners. Who are you listening? Is your heart right with God? So the Revelation 5 will prepare your mind for that time. Because you need to be going into studying the end time as a child of God. You need to be going into understanding of the end time with a mindset of a child of God and not a sinner or one of the Christians or one of the type of Christians that Jesus warned about in Revelations chapter 1 to 3. So if you find yourself in any of those categories, repent today. And this Revelations 5 will buttress the point and deal with another set of people. So let's keep reading. Revelations chapter 1 verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne. So now you know who sat on the throne. That is God. Just this bunch of beautiful light, glorious light that everybody worships in heaven. Everybody's bowing down to him in heaven. And in his right hand, right? So in his right hand, there was a book. They wrote inside the book. They wrote at the back of the book as well. And it was sealed with seven seals. And verse 2. I saw a strong angel, strong angel, <laughs> proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much. Because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book. Neither to look thereon. Verse 5. <clears throat> and one of the elders, that's the 24 elders. So we say that the beasts, the four beasts are before God's throne. And there are 24 elders before God's throne as well. So verse 5 says, and one of the elders <clears throat> said unto me, Weep not, don't cry, weep not, behold the lamb, sorry, behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. So the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. So, remember that a lot of things were in front of God's throne and they never mentioned Jesus being in front of God's throne. They mentioned the Holy Spirit, the seven spirits of God. They mentioned the, the 24 elders, the four beasts, the rainbow, the sea of glass. All those things in front of God's throne, they didn't mention Jesus or where he was staying. But now... Chapter 5 is showing us Jesus in front of the throne of God. So let's go. So who is this lamb of the tribe of Judah? 
who is worthy, who has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. Verse 6 says, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne. So who is in the midst of the throne? In the midst of the throne and of the four beasts. And in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it, as it had been slain. So it looks like the lamb has been slain. So when you want to slay a ram, you slay from the neck, right? So there's uh, the marks of being slain on the neck of this lamb. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. I'm still trying to understand the seven spirits of God has been sent forth into all the earth. Do you remember what Jesus said? I will send you the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And from our studies, we see that the Holy Spirit is not just alone. We have other spirits, six spirits, the spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, might, and the fear of God, and then the Holy Spirit, seven spirits of God. So seven spirits of God sent forth to all the earth, right? So it means that in addition to the Holy Spirit, God is giving people that are willing to receive. If you are willing to receive from God the spirit of wisdom, if you are willing to receive from God the spirit of knowledge, understanding, spirit of counsel, to know what to do, what decision to take, how to make the right decision, counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of the fear of God. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you can also receive the spirits of God and have an excellent spirit like Daniel and have the spirit of God upon you like Jesus. And so it's available to you as a Christian. You have to take advantage of it. So um, the spirit of God sent out to all the earth. And guess what? Jesus has the spirit in him. He had the seven horns and the seven eyes the lamb had seven eyes which are the seven spirits of god verse 7 and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne hallelujah so the lamb is worthy to take the book and open it and we're gonna see what's in the book next meeting by god's grace but let's keep going so he took the book out of the right hand of god who sat upon the throne and verse 8 and when he had taken the book the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb they worship jesus that's the lamb of god right fell down before the lamb having every one of them haps and golden vials full of odors which are the prayers of saints interesting so the 24 elders had haps with them so the beasts and the 24 elders had haps with them and then these golden vials Full of orders and the orders are the prayers your prayers as a saint my prayer as a saint so these are our prayers so if you're wondering where your prayers go they go into the vial full of orders of the full of orders which are your prayers right and they are being held by the 24 elders wow your prayers are in the presence of god verse 9 says that and they and by god's grace they'll be answered because the bible says that in isaiah before you call i will answer you and while you are yet speaking i will hear so if you're wondering <laughs> if you're wondering if god <laughs> hears your prayers he does he hears your prayers and he answers it especially if you keep your life in god's hands he answers the one that is good for your life right so 
I was about to sleep one day and I was thinking about a lot of things. I was talking to God about a lot of things and I said some stuff telling God about what I know about his will for me, right? And then I I ended that and then I started saying all that stuff, asking God, praying about stuff, praying about revelation to make a decision, revelation about other things. <sighs> And I, I prayed and I slept. And out of everything, I would think that God will tell me or reveal to me revelation about the most important one to me, right? But I want to bring two things out of here. The revelation that God showed me that night made me understand that as a Christian, God hears everything you say and he picks the one he likes to respond to. Remember when Daniel was praying? for the deliverance of the people of israel he was like how can we spend 70 years in babylon god please deliver us don't let us spend 70 years in babylon and god <laughs> did not even did not even spend time he, he just sent an angel and said you guys are going to spend 70 years moving on this is what will happen in the end time so he did not even like waste time he said daniel don't don't waste your time on that and he chose to show him deeper revelation. So God picks what to respond to. And with all my ramblings that night, God just picked the most important one that he wanted to respond to, which is not was not it was not the important one to me at that time, but it was the important one to God because his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts, his value system is not our value system and i am trying to get my own value system to god's value system god doesn't value money doesn't value worldly wealth and i'm trying to get my value system to that level so it doesn't value even the thing that i prayed about that night that was really important to me as much as he valued what he responded to among all the things that i said to him and his response to me corrected my what I was talking about. So he corrected me. And that was what he said. About everything. Yeah, like that, his response to everything that I listed that night. He just picked the one that was important. And he responded to me. And I'm grateful for that. And I know that in due time. If it's important for me to know the rest of the revelations. He would reveal it to me. At his time. He's God. So moving on to our study today. Um. I was trying to say that um, so our prayers, God hears them and answers them. He hears them. He hears what we say, even in our bedroom. He hears every, he listens to every word you say. And if he wants to say something, he responds, he tells you what he wants to say. He's very quiet. God hides himself. He doesn't talk much. That's what I have discovered. But when you seek him, you will find him. And he will speak to you everything you need. He thinks you need to know. Not everything you think you need to know. He will tell you everything he thinks you need to know. Okay. Revelations 5 verse 8. So these 24 elders and the beasts, they took their... Their haps and started playing and then and their bowls and verse 9 they sung a new song we know you know we know two of their songs now but now they have a third song and this is a new song and it says thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou was slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation so I don't know if I should start explaining what God revealed to me here before I read through the whole of Revelations chapter 5 however let me just let me just pinpoint this I'm wondering why the four beasts and the 24 elders has said that Jesus redeemed us right I was expecting them to say jesus redeemed mankind right jesus redeemed 
you and I. He redeemed sinners, the people that fell, Adam and Eve and their descendants. However, the 24 elders said, including themselves, including themselves among the people that Jesus redeemed. So it says that thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seal thereof because you were slain. Jesus, you were slain and you've redeemed us to God by thy blood, right? I know that Jesus redeemed me and you to God by his blood. But I didn't know that he also redeemed the 24 elders and the four beasts, right? And they're the ones singing the song. So who are these 24 elders and who are the four beasts? Are they former members of the earth that died and went to heaven? I don't know. These are the mysteries which God will choose to reveal in his time. But let us focus on the ones we know. I know that God redeemed me. And what does it mean to be redeemed? So... It says here that thou hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. He has redeemed every kindred, every tongue, every people, every nation, whether you're black or white or brown or red or orange. Whatever color you are, you have been redeemed by Jesus. So now let's just dig in quickly into what it means to be redeemed. And we're going to start from Exodus gonna be short so just follow me and get it fast i don't know if you know what it means to be redeemed but we're gonna see exodus 13 11 to 13 and i'm gonna read so fast so just open your bibles to exodus 13 11 to 13 and remember when the lord brings you into the land he promised to your ancestors long ago where the canaanites are now living all firstborn sons and firstborn male animals belong to the Lord, and you shall give them to him. A firstborn donkey may be purchased back. Okay, I don't like that word, purchased back. I want the word redeemed, so I'm going to use King James Version. Um, 13. I want the Bible to define redeemed. I don't want this synonym to give me another word for redeemed so this is the living bible i love it so much but i really like king james version as well so exodus 13 11 to 13 says that and it shall be when the lord shall bring thee into the land of the canaanites as he swear unto thee and to thy fathers and shall give it to thee that thou shalt set apart unto the lord all that openeth the metrics whoa the womb is called the metrics so <laughs> whoa that that is that's complex and i feel i feel good like the womb is called a complex metrics anyway all that open at the womb the metrics and every firstling that cometh out of a beast so every firstborn of the human beings every firstborn of animals the males shall be the lords. And every firstborn of a donkey, that's an ass, thou shalt redeem with a lamb. And if thou wilt not redeem it, then thou shalt break his neck. And all the firstborn of man among thy children shall thou redeem. So, what does it mean to be redeemed? Right? Now, God said that you should um every firstborn is his right and if you read if you read if you read from the beginning it means that you should sacrifice every firstborn to god every firstborn animal sacrifice to god but god gave specific instruction for donkeys and human beings because he doesn't want human sacrifice and probably the donkeys are used for work 
right so he said you can redeem those donkeys so now instead of the false bonds of humans and donkeys to be slain right to be killed they will be redeemed right they will be redeemed so what does that mean that means they will be redeemed by a lamb a lamb will be slain in their place so the meaning of redemption is when something dies in your place and god has destined or god has laid down the life of jesus to redeem us god said jesus will be our redeemer right and jesus willingly gave his life to redeem us so let's read ephesians 1 verse 7 ephesians 1 7 says that It says that in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So previously it was a lamb that would die in place of a human being and they will be redeemed, right? They belong to God now. But now it's Jesus who's been slain. And in the olden days, the lamb was a symbol of Jesus, but it was not perfect, but it worked. For that time right as a temporary solution so now the punishment for the sins of Adam and Eve is eternal separation from God eternal death and it's called eternal separation from God that's the punishment <clears throat> for sin the wages of sin is death it's not physical death everybody's gonna die physically it is eternal death you know what it means to die eternally is eternal separation from God, eternal punishment, right? Eternal condemnation, not life, but death. Every day, dying, 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 forever. And I don't want to imagine it. I don't know what it looks like. Anyway, that was our destiny until God took upon himself our punishment, until Jesus took our place. And he suffered eternal punishment for the whole mankind every people every race every every nation he suffered for everybody he took the place of the whole mankind right he suffered eternal eternal separation from god and he did it in a few moments when he died on the cross he did it in that few moments why was he able to do that because he is God so Jesus was able to suffer eternal punishment eternal separation from God because he is God and he was able to do that in a few moments because he's God and in addition to being able to do that in a short time he was also able to rise again just because he's God. So he has suffered for everybody. He has done it for the whole world. And now you have a free will to either accept that he has done it for you or reject that he has done it for you. You don't believe it. So faith is believing that Jesus has suffered your punishment and accept him. Accept that he has suffered and believe him. Believe him that he has suffered for you. But if you don't accept that he has suffered for you, if you don't believe that he has suffered for you, then you will suffer your own punishment. Romans 3 verse 25 says that. <clears throat> Romans 3 25 It says that so let me read from 24 so open your Bibles to Romans chapter 3 verse 24 to 25 it says being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God had set forth to be a 
propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. So, God has set forth that what, come on, God has set forth that what will take away our punishment is this, is, is, is the sacrifice that Jesus has done on the cross of Christ. So, there's a part, I thought Romans chapter 3 verse 25 says that he appeased God's wrath. He appeased the wrath of God. So Romans 3.25. Okay. Let me read another version. So that word, perpetration, is throwing me off. So Romans 3.25 says that, For God sent Jesus Christ to take the punishment for our sins and to end all God's anger against us. He used Christ's blood and our faith as the means of saving us from God's wrath. So, the wages of sin is death. And that death is as a result of God's anger and wrath against sin and sinners. So, God, Jesus had actually appeased God's wrath. And all we need to do is to believe that he, have, he has done that. And accept the fact that he has. He has done that. So I'm a sinner. I'm sentenced to life imprisonment. And someone says that I, I will do it for you, right? Or I have done it for you. And, you, and you, you have a choice to either go and do it yourself or come to him and say, well, I'm clinging to you because I believe what you say about, I believe what you said about what you've done for me. I believe that you have suffered this punishment for me, so I'm clinging to you and I, I need you in my life. Please just just take me, like hold me. And and I something's coming to my mind right now, but I pray God will give me more wisdom on how to do it, how to say it. So now you cannot redeem yourself because if you got the meaning of what it means to be redeemed, it means that somebody else would die in your place. So there are two options. It's either somebody redeems you or you take the punishment. You get So somebody else has to die in your place. You cannot die in your place. There's nothing like that. It's either you take the full punishment, you suffer eternal separation from God, or accept that Jesus has already suffered for you. So, it's up to you to believe and have faith in what I'm saying. And the Holy Spirit is going to help you right now. Because he's the one that gives you the assurance that he's the one that convicts you and tells you that Jesus has already done this for you. And in addition to that, you would see the evidence. If you come and accept him, he would set you free from the guilt of sin. He would set you free from the bondage of sin. You will no longer be a slave to sin. That addiction or depression or sadness will disappear. So you will see this evidence that, say, our spirit is the spirit of God. Bears witness with our spirit that we are sons of God. So the Holy Spirit will assure your mind <laughs> that you, you will not suffer that punishment because Jesus has already done it for you. But it takes you to first come to Jesus and believe and accept it. Amen. So, and remember, he has suffered for everybody already. All you need is to believe and accept that he saved you from that punishment. Then you will escape. And that is faith. That is being saved. If you don't believe in Jesus... And what he has done, then you don't accept his redemption. You will suffer it yourself. Eternal separation. And you're not God, right? So you cannot rise up again. You cannot. It's called eternal suffering. It's going to be for eternity. You cannot suffer it in a short time. Because only Jesus can suffer it in that short time. And only Jesus can rise and survive it. You cannot survive it. I cannot survive it. It's forever. But Jesus has survived it for us. And that's why he's calling you to come. So before we enter into the secrets of the secrets of eternal life, 
of eternity, of the end time, I mean. What is going to happen to the end? God wants to make sure that you are a Christian and a born-again child of God. God wants to make sure that the person that is trying to understand the secrets of the end time, what will happen at the end, is saved. And so, if you want to accept the sacrifice that Jesus has made for you and I on the cross of Calvary, Jesus has already paid it all. He has already suffered. I don't know how I can explain it better to you to make you understand that you don't have to suffer eternal life in hell you don't have to because it has already been done but if you don't come to jesus if you don't believe that he has done it then you don't believe in jesus you don't believe in his word you don't believe in what he has to say then you would have to if you don't believe it then you can go ahead and not believe that your punishment has been paid so it's still in front of you and then you go on suffering but if you believe it you gotta hold on to that belief right and you of all people need to believe that someone has paid for your sins right so just like someone is convicted and sentenced to jail but he doesn't believe that somebody else has paid and he says i still have to go on i still have to go to jail i still have to go to jail that is just what it means when you reject jesus you say i still need to go i still need to go and serve my time right that's what happens to every sinner that rejects jesus they they are insisting on going to serve their time when jesus has already done it and he's telling you come believe what i'm i'm telling you i already i already did it for you amen <clears throat> so one more thing i wanted to say about this we sinned against god and we could try to pin it on adam and eve and say adam and eve sinned against god right but we should remember that we keep sinning even after adam and eve when you are born you still tell lies you still sin against god and it's like taking a pound of flesh out of god's body out of jesus right so he he has a right to take his pound of flesh back from us but he will not do that he would forgive us instead and then he would tell us what he wants us to do right so if you have ever been forgiven by somebody right you would feel the need to ask him what do you want in return for this forgiveness that you have done for me what do you want in return and he actually has things that he wants in return for forgiving you for not taking the pound of flesh and that pound of flesh is eternal death eternal separation from god so he has things in he, he needs in return from us and then one thing he needs is first of all believing that he has actually forgiven us he has redeemed us he has died in in our stead and we don't have to die anymore we just have to enjoy the life then we have to ask him what do you want us to do for you what how do you want us to live for you now that you have done this great thing we cannot be ungrateful and just go on and then when we go on we meet with satan again and we sin so we have to stay close to this jesus amen so let's continue but before we continue i just want to call you right now if you want to give your life to jesus christ if you want to accept that jesus has died for you and he has suffered for you i want you to bow your heads right now and confess your sins to god you know your sins the ones you know about tell jesus about it for the ones you don't know about he will point it out to you but right now you know the ways you have sinned against god the ways you have gone against that conscience that god has put in every man <clears throat> you know how you have gone against god's word and his will you know i want you to ask god to forgive you say jesus forgive me all my sins forgive me of all my sins and you have to tell god and jesus that you believe that he has taken away your punishment you believe that he has redeemed you you believe that he has suffered for you and you have to say thank you 
for suffering for me, for suffering the punishment for my sins. Thank you. I believe that you did this. I believe that you died. I believe that because you are God, you rose up on the, on the third day. I thank you. I ask that you forgive me of all my sins and wash me clean with the blood of Jesus. Wash me clean with the blood of Jesus. Redeem me by your blood, O oh Jesus. Thank you in Jesus' name. I also want you to pray this prayer because after salvation, after God has forgiven you your sins, you still need to change your nature. So another prayer that you would pray right now with me as a new Christian is, as a new Christian, I'm saying a new child of God because if God has forgiven you, now you are clean. Just believe it. It's a believing thing. You have to believe and know that he has forgiven you and will not count your past sins against you any longer. So now you are clean. Next thing is that you need to change your nature. You still have the nature of a pig that goes back to his sins, that goes back to his vomit, that, that models himself in muddy puddles. <clears throat> and that is muddy puddle of sin. You need to change your nature. So ask God today. Say, God, please, nail the old man that loves to sin to the cross. That old man in me that loves to sin. Father, nail it to the cross right now. Nail him to the cross right now. I ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Help me. Let that old man die today on your cross. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And just believe that God... He's doing this if you said the prayer in sincerity God will do it and I believe that God is doing it for you right now and the next the third prayer I thank you Lord because we prayed in Jesus name the third prayer I want us to pray is that God will give you a new man the Bible says that if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation all things are passed away and all things are become new so you are in Christ, you are a new creation. I need you to request this new man to live in you. It is the work of God to give birth to this new man in you. The Bible says that, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born of water and the Spirit of God, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So you need to be born of water. This water is a new life. And anybody that drinks it will have new life. Water needs to be born in you. That's the new man. The new life. And the Holy Spirit needs to be born in you. That's the Spirit of God. That's born of the Spirit. So ask God, give me this new man. And give me your Holy Spirit, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ. This is available to you. As a promise of God. Say Lord. Give me the new man. And give me your Holy Spirit. I ask in Jesus name. In Jesus mighty name. I pray. I know that. If you said that prayer in faith. Said those three prayers in faith. Jesus has saved you. And I'll pray with you right now. Father I thank you. For my brothers and sisters that have. Accepted that you have taken their punishment. For their various numerous terrible sins. That they have ever sinned against you. Thank you because now they believe that you have taken that punishment from them and they, they will not suffer it anymore. It's a relief. Thank you for the peace you are giving them and the joy that your Holy Spirit is giving them. Thank you, O oh God, for the grace of crucifying the old man that loves sin, O oh God, to the cross and giving them a new man that hates sin, the new man that will teach their flesh how to live for you, the new man that will destroy all the habits they've learned from the old man as they read your word and pray. I ask that you will hold them firm in the name of Jesus Christ. As this one, so God, grow in you, O oh God. As they read your word, your word, Lord, let it become flesh in them. Let it sanctify them. Let the water of your word sanctify them. Let it become flesh in them. And let 
it increased this new life in them. Let this new baby Jesus in them begin to grow as they read the Bible and pray every day. Let it grow, oh God, until they can't contain it anymore. And let your Holy Spirit, Lord, activate this water. Let it begin to flow out of them like a fountain, oh God. In the name of Jesus, bust, and let them bust out with joy, peace, love, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith. Lord, let them bust out with this fruit of the Spirit. Temperance, Lord. Let them bust out with the fruit of the Spirit, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you because you have done it. I worship your majesty because you are in the business of saving sinners, oh God, and redeeming us to yourself. Receive the glory ancient of days in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, so I'm glad that I was able to come to this point and God was able to open your eyes and I'm glad that we've been able to accept Christ's redemption for you and I. To God be the glory. The next thing we're going to go, we're going to finish our study, please, today. Let's try to finish our study. So, it says that, verse 9, where we stop is, Jesus redeemed us to God by the, his blood. Every kindred, every tongue, every people, every nation has have been redeemed already. And we, you and I have accepted Jesus' redemption. And we're excited. We're living for him. We're doing everything he says in his word right verse 10 says in addition to this redemption he did not stop there he has also made us unto god kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth do you know what that means he has made you and i kings and priests now i want to read something to us that i wrote some time ago it says that <clears throat> Jesus has made us kings and priests unto God. But, guess what? Our firstborn Jesus, when he was on earth, did not feel like a king on earth. So, you might not feel like a king when you are in another kingdom. Especially if that kingdom does not know that you are a king. So, when Jesus was on earth, when Pilate asked him... <clears throat> Are you a king? Because they call you the king of the Jews. Are you a king? And Jesus said, yes, I'm a king. You've said it yourself. But my kingdom is not of this earth. So <clears throat> if his kingdom were of, of this earth, it, they wouldn't kill him. But his kingdom was not of this earth at that time. Right? So you might not feel like a king <clears throat> on this earth when you give your life to Christ, when you're a Christian. But when Jesus comes, Daniel 7 Verse 27. Let me make sure it is. It says that, But the sovereignty and the greatness of all kingdoms under heaven shall be handed over to the holy people of the Most High. Daniel 7, 27. Correct. Thank you, Jesus. Then, the sovereignty and the greatness. So when Jesus comes, that is when we are going to be kings. But right now, what we can be is priests yes just put it on the back of your mind that you're a king but because you're not in your kingdom you don't live like a king right you don't make all these kingly decisions but you can exhibit your priesthood on this earth and also behave like a king right you're a king behave like a king walk in authority that jesus has given you but what you can exhibit is being a priest how can you be a priest? By praising God every day of your life, like the priests of the olden days, and reconciling man back to Jesus. So, reconciling man, preaching what you know about the Word of God to the world. That is how you can be a priest. Praising God daily, worshiping God daily, give, giving God praise daily, and reconciling man back to God, and that, because that's what the priests used to do in the olden days. So let's keep going now. So, um, Peter, in Peter it says that, For we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, 
to show forth the praises of him that has called us from darkness into light. So that is how we know our duties as priests. You see that? That's where I got the fact that you can be a priest. It's called 1 Peter 2 verse 10. 1 Peter 2 verse 10. <clears throat> First Peter two nine and ten, I believe. So let's 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 read it quickly. It says in First Peter two nine and ten. Open your Bibles to that verse. But you are a chosen generation. First Peter two verse nine. A chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show for the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light so you can show for the praises of god who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light so praises to god and show for wait yeah show show for praises to god who has called you out of darkness amen So let's put it at the back of our minds that we need to praise God every day and worship God every day. And there's another part where God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. And that is how we can be priests. Ministry of reconciliation. <clears throat> and that is Second Corinthians 5. Verse 18. So, so before I go to 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18, 1 Peter 2 verse 10, let me quickly chip that in, says that once we were not a people, but now we are the people of God. Once we had not received mercy, but now we have received mercy. And 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18 says, just write those things down, just remember who you are in Christ. And all things are of God. Who has reconciled us to himself by who? Jesus Christ. God redeemed us by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was the lamb that died in our place. And he has also given us the work to, re to not to redeem other people. God has redeemed us to reconcile, to tell other people, as I told you right now, how you have been redeemed if you did not know it before. Many people don't know that they've been redeemed. Many people still under the bondage of darkness under the bondage of sin but when they know that they've been redeemed and they accept it they see the freedom and they see, they see the joy and they are excited about it and they are happy and they are christians that's called christianity amen i pray god will continue to help us in jesus name let's go back to revelation chapter 5 verse 10 so we are kings and priests and shall reign on the earth and when shall we reign on the earth daniel seven twenty seven, at the end time at the end of this world when we have been raptured and we come back to earth we shall reign on the earth the sovereignty the greatness of all kingdoms under heaven shall be handed over to the holy people of the most high and god will be our king verse 11 says that now i beheld and a voice Sorry, and I beheld, I saw, and heard the voice of many angels. So, in addition to this, 24 elders and the four beasts singing that God has redeemed us. Thank you, Jesus, for doing this. The Lamb of God that was slain. Many angels also were singing. They were round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and they and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands. So, 10,000 times 10,000 that is um, millions right that's almost 10 million or billions let me multiply it real quick so 10,000 then 10 times 1,000 is 100 million right 10,000 times 10,000 is 100 million hmm. not sure how John counted that number but he was like 10,000 times ten thousand and thousands of thousands so there's so millions and billions of angels so many saying with a loud voice 
Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which was in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as who are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that seated upon the throne and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. Hmm. <clears throat> and the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. So God is eternal, lives forever and ever. And every creature on earth, on the earth, in the sea, John had them saying, Go give us light about this verse. He heard them saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power belong to him that sits upon the throne and the Lamb forever and ever. Amen. And the beast said, Amen. Hallelujah. So that's the end of Revelation chapter 5. I'm sure you have been blessed. And we're still going to keep praying for more revelation about this chapter as we move on to the next chapter. Next meeting where we begin to uncover the secrets of the end time. So till I come your way again, I want you to stay blessed. Read your Bible. Pray. Seek to hear God's voice. Seek God and you will find God. Let me pray with you before you go. Everlasting Father, we thank you for a wonderful time of revelation. Thank you for your strength to do this. Thank you for your wisdom, knowledge, your mercy, your grace. Please, all our brothers and sisters that have been saved, Lord, hold them firm. Hold them till the end in Jesus' name. Your word said, you made me to understand by your servant that everyone that you have you have called or you have accepted or received or everyone that has come to you you hold them firm and none of them will be lost except the son of perdition that was judas that means lord everyone that has come to you especially myself my brothers and sisters listen the one that have just given their life to christ today lord you will hold them firm lord hold us firm in jesus name don't let us be lost, Lord. Draw us to yourself, God. Don't let sin deceive us. Don't let Satan deceive us. Help us to dip ourselves buried in your word and in your presence, oh God, so that we will not be deceived, so that we would spend eternity with you. Help us to continue doing your will, Lord. Forgive us and wash us clean with your blood. Help us to continue to do your will, oh God, and bless us in every way we... we we are expecting your blessings and your presence in our health lord heal the sick among us lord raise the dead among us the physically dead the spiritually dead raise oh god supply all our needs according to your riches and glory oh god save souls save sinners remove sadness from our way give us your joy your peace your fruit of the spirit oh god help us to find interest in reading your word oh god help us to find interest in praying to you oh god in speaking in tongues oh god in seeking your presence presence oh god in praying oh god give us the grace wear us the garment of prayer oh god draw us closer to yourself oh god even in this dangerous times this end times oh god help us to live for you receive the glory ancient of days in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen so till i come your way again next week next time stay blessed amen